This is example 2-7. Um, we're going to find, yet again, the potential of a uniformly charged spherical shell, shell of radius r. And this is the same problem we solved back in uh, problem 2.7, which was a difficult problem. This is the same problem we just solved in example 6. Um, and But we're going to do it this time using that new formula we just discovered. So we discovered that the potential at a point P um, is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the integral over R d tau, right? So um, the, uh, we're using, I'm sorry, we're using, it's not, it's not solid, it's d a, sigma d a, because we're using some surface. So um, R squared, what is, what is, R. So R squared, using the law of cosines, is basically equal to Z squared, which is this distance here, plus R squared, which is the distance to that surface, minus 2ZR cos theta. And the integral um, is going to be rather easy to solve. So we have basically um, sigma comes out. And then we have the integral, the surface integral of, well, the surface area um, dA is equal to r squared sine theta d theta d phi, and that's all over this um, square root of z squared plus r squared minus 2z r cos theta. Now, problem 2-7, you're, you're going to recognize that denominator. Um, uh, how many times have we solved this? Now, um, an interesting if you haven't solved this this integral before, it's you know if you substitute in um, if you substitute in uh, u minus cos theta and then du becomes sine theta d theta, and so this integral um, oh and we have to have you know theta is zero go means that u is equal to minus one and theta of pi means that u is equal to 1. Okay, so substituting that in, and I'm going to diverge from the text here, so I'm going to use a different color just so you understand that we're not um, exactly in sync with the text. So sigma integral d phi, which is going to be 2 pi, and then integral, oh, r squared. We can plot the r squared. It's constant as well. So now we have sine theta, which becomes uh, du all over the square root of z squared plus r squared uh, plus 2zru, okay? And so solving for that integral, we, um, well, we can do another substitution here. Let's do v equals um, the square root of z squared plus r squared. Now, if you recognize and can solve these integrals in your head, I'm, I'm proud of you. Really, I am. But this is more for the people that don't know how to solve these integrals that may have forgotten. So, and then, um, so that means u is equal to v squared minus e squared minus r squared all over 2zr. And du is equal to, let's see, where's the, there's a dv, so 2v dv all over 2 ZR and the twos cancel. Okay, so now we have. I'm going to pull this two pi out. That's just two pi. Integral from um, du is v dv v dv all over z r, and this is all v. Um, so then we have these two cancel, boom, boom, and uh, we have to figure out the boundary conditions. Let's find the boundary conditions. So when u is minus 1, so this is, let me pull out my blue here again. This is minus 1 to 1. So when u, and that means v is equal to the square root of z squared plus r squared minus 2zr which you'll recognize is just z minus r squared. And when u is equal to 1, then v is equal to the square root of z plus r 
squared. And if you remember the square root of a square is the absolute value, so we get the absolute value of z minus r and the absolute value of z plus r. Okay, well, you didn't even see that, did you? I'm sorry about that, I did it again. Let me walk through that one more time. So when u is negative one, v is equal to z squared plus r squared minus two z r, right? And z squared plus r squared minus two z r is just z squared minus r squared squared. Z, z minus r squared, this, this point right there. And on the other hand, when u is one, then we get z squared plus r squared plus two z r, and that becomes z plus r squared. And the square root of the square is always equal to the absolute value, so that's what we got there. So let's plug that in down here. So we got the absolute value of z minus r and the absolute value of z plus r. And so finishing up this equation, we got one over four pi epsilon naught two pi r squared sigma. And then we got to evaluate, uh, oh, let's get, pull out the zr over zr. Um, then we got to evaluate um, v when it's positive. So. There we go. And this is, this is um, exactly equivalent to um, what he has, except for he doesn't bring the square root of the squares to the absolute value. So um, when we have two conditions, when we're outside, that means z is greater than r. Uh, this term is positive, right? Hold on a second. I feel like I've done something wrong here. Yes, this term is positive, right? So outside, um, we get uh, z plus r minus z plus r, so we get 2r. Inside, we get, this has to be flipped sign, so it's gonna be 2z, okay? So we basically get we have the factor of two that's constant. One over four pi epsilon naught. This factor of two is gonna go over here to four pi. And then outside, it's going to be r squared sigma. And this r is gonna cancel the r on the bottom so you get z outside. And then inside, it's gonna be one over four pi epsilon naught, four pi r squared sigma and the z is gonna cancel the z on the bottom, so you're gonna get over r, okay? And four pi r squared sigma, the reason why I'm leaving it like that is that's just, that's just a surface area times sigma, that's the total charge of the sphere. Um, so we solved this using a rather simple integral. Um, um, and of course, you know, using, using Gauss's law to get the field and then using, um, the divergence of that field. I believe that's what you're saying here. Using 218. Let's see what's 218. Where is 218? Yeah, so using, using, um, the way we did it in example six is much easier than this way, basically what I'm saying. But it, this, this just shows that, you know, this is another tool in your arsenal um, for solving for potentials. So hope you had fun. Thanks, bye.